Hey guys! This week's video is a bit special and different. I'm doing a collaboration with Maida, one of my friends here on YouTube. We decided on making an Easter theme collab where I made kind of like the main course and she made the dessert. So in my video, I'm going to show you how to make this roast leg of lamb. And in her video, she's going to show you how to make this super cute and delicious looking cake with an adorable chocolate bunny on top. I'm going to put the link to her video in the info box as well as at the end of this video. So make sure to check it out. Let's get started. So for the meat, I first took some scrap clay and used this to mix the colors. I usually always start out by mixing the center portion, which is usually the most red or rosy tone. And then as we're moving towards the edge of the meat or the outer portion, I just keep adding some more white, brown and grayish tones. I also mixed an off-white color and then mixed part of that with translucent. First, you're going to take the off-white mixture and roll out a snake. You can then use a dotting tool or a silicone tool to add some texture. Then for the end, you can either cut it very smooth or kind of jaggedy like I did. And then I used a pointy dotting tool to also add a tiny bit of texture here. Once you're done, pre-bake. Next, you're gonna make a super simple cane for the meat itself. You want to start out with the most rosy tone in the center and then wrap this in the sheets of the other colors. If you want, you can choose to skip this next step. I added some of the translucent white mixture to the outer portion of the cane. It's basically just going to look like the fat and the reason why I say you can skip this step if you want is because depending on how you cut the meat and shade it, you're not necessarily gonna see it. And once the cane is done, you can roll it out. Cut off a piece in the size you need for the roast. Then use your fingers to close one end and add the bone. Next, I use my fingers and a silicone tool to shape it. And I then went in with a pointy dotting tool and started adding some more texture. One thing to note is that depending on how the leg of lamb has been seasoned, dry rubbed or marinated, whatever else you do to it, the texture of the outside is going to change. And so you might choose to do it differently than what I did, depending on the look you're going for. I first added some of the deeper creases and I guess bumps. And I then added some of the more fine texture, as well as a few layers to create some depth. I know these clips can get pretty long, but I do my best not to skip anything and not to speed it up too much, because I know some of you appreciate to see more of the detail work, so I hope you don't mind too much. So while doing this, I can might as well take the opportunity to pretend I'm a broken record. So if you have any questions about the tools and materials I use, I do have a video which I always link in the info box. In the info box, you'll also find a link to my FAQ, which answers a lot of the questions I get every single day. And as always, if you have any food requests, feel free to leave them in the comments. After you're done with the texture, you're going to do some more texturing and for this I first use some crumpled up tinfoil and then a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. 
Once you've done that, you should have something like this, and you can then use your blade to cut some slices. Just like with the outside of the roast, the inside is going to look different depending on how it was carved or sliced, and the knife that was used. So you can either make it look very clean and smooth, or make it look kind of rustic and almost torn. I chose to make it fairly smooth, but with some rustic, not completely cut off bits at the bottom. Then for the texture on the inside, I first used one of my larger needle tools to add some of the more defined or visible lines. And I then used a very fine needle tool to add some of the fibrous meat texture by going in a crisscross motion. Once I was done with that, I went in with a toothbrush in a light dabbing motion. And then finally I went in with the fine needle tool again and added a few more details wherever I thought it was needed. Next up, I took some of the leftover frosting from my birthday cake tutorial, which might seem a bit weird, but I just added a small amount of this to the bone of the roast. And this is basically just going to look like those small, I guess, leftover bits of meat or seasoning that is usually looking a bit more burnt on the bone. Then bake. After baking, you can add the shading. I chose to first go in with some soft pastels just to give it a base color and I applied these with a damp brush. This doesn't have to be neat at all, it's just as I said to give it a base color. And before adding the rest of the shading, I just wanted to add a tiny bit more texture. So for this, I mixed the glaze with some black craft sand and applied this on top. And once again, depending on the look you're going for, you can add more or less sand. The only thing is that if you want to add a lot of this to get a very rough looking texture, I do recommend using a lighter color, maybe even white sand, because it's going to be a lot easier to color on top. And then finally, for the rest of the shading, I just used acrylic paint. I first went in with the lighter shade, which is almost kind of like a mustardy color. I then went in with the more reddish brown, which is almost like a barbecue or very delicious marinade. And I then lastly went in with the darker brown and some black. I also went in with a tiny bit of the brown paint very watered down to the inside of the roast and this is just going to define the meat texture. And this is optional, but I did the same with a red paint to define the more rosy bits of the meat. So 
seal it with a glass glaze and the basic roast is done. Since you don't usually eat meat on its own, I made some super quick roast potatoes and for this I first mixed up a pale yellow with some translucent. I then roll out a snake, cut off some small pieces and rolled them slightly while still leaving some of the edges visible. I then cut those into small pieces and then used a pointed dotting tool and a toothbrush to add some texture. After baking, I glued them onto the dish together with the roast, and I then used some of the same acrylic paints I used for the roast to add some shading. I first went in with the lightest brown to get that almost caramelized golden look, and I then added some of the darker brown to some of the edges. You also want to make sure to add some paint to the dish because I would find it very odd if you were able to arrange a roast and slice it without the plate getting dirty. As a final touch I just glued on a small bit of some princess pine and the main course is served. Don't forget to check out Mylis video on her channel, I'm going to link it in the info box as well as at the end of this video. Really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next tutorial.